Welcome to the City of Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment meeting for October 7th, 2021. The agenda documents and minutes are located at okc.primegov.com slash public slash portal. For anyone wishing to speak today, hopefully you've already arranged uh, to speak with staff. If you're the applicant, you'll be acknowledged to speak at the appropriate time. If you are not the applicant and would like to speak, there are white cards outside that you'll need to fill out uh, with your name and address and the matter that you're hoping to speak on. We will call the case and then I'll recognize the applicant or applicant's representative to speak. Then we'll rec recognize any pro uh, supporters, then any protests, and then we'll close with the applicant speaking. Public comment will then be closed unless specifically reopened by me or another board member. The board will then deliberate and vote. For speakers other than the applicant, please limit your comments to three minutes. Consistent with the city's official proclamation, city employees are required to wear a mask during the proceeding and everyone else is encouraged to wear a mask. They're available outside if you do not bring one. Board members will be allowed to uh, ask questions and make comments at any time during the meeting. Please do not interrupt board members while they're speaking because we need a clear record and it makes the meetings go by much faster. Before you begin with your comments, please identify yourself by stating your name and your address, and this meeting is called to order. Uh, I will note for any applications, uh, we have four board members today and you'll need three uh, votes in favor for your application to pass. And so if that changes uh, some strategy that you have, I'm letting you know that now. Um, first item on the agenda is to receive the minutes from the September 16th, 2021 meeting. Do we have any changes or a motion? Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the September 16th, 2021 meeting. Once you're able to cast your votes. And minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is continuance requests or withdrawals, and I believe we have two. Yeah, we have first is item five, case 14-927, the applicant requests a continuance to October 21. And item 18, case 14792 has been deferred indefinitely. Is anyone hoping to speak on any of those applications? Okay. Um, board members, I think we can take a motion. I will mention on um, the second request for continuance, item 18, to defer indefinitely. Um, I've been told by city staff that the staff can kind of follow up every couple of months. And if there's no traction, that we can just withdraw the application. But um, I didn't want to continue it and have staff keeping track of something for two or three years. So um, with that, is there any questions, comments, or a motion? I move approval, both of them. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to continue the items as requested or recommended. Once we're able to, cast your votes. And those items are continued. Move on to items on the consent docket. Seeing none, we'll move to items requiring a separate vote. The first item for hearing is one, case 14902. It's a request for a variance to the aisle standards in the C3 district located at 436 Northwest 30th Street. Good afternoon. My name is Jocelyn Lupkin and I'm re representing Mumtaz Khan. The, his property is at 436 Northwest 30th Street. Mr. Um, Mr. Khan's asking that a 12-foot driveway be approved in lieu of a 22-foot driveway for this project. He is removing existing on-street parking to comply with Historic Preservation Commission recommendations to include landscaping and a sidewalk that will provide a more consistent and attractive presence on the street instead of a fully paved front yard. Uh, and he's going to provide access to off-street parking with this driveway at, because he feels it's safer than the on-street parking that is used by most of the businesses in the area. The immediate neighbors to the east have expressed support to Mr. Khan about the building use and welcome having the building occupied currently is vacant. In closing, the Board of Adjustment staff reports commented that the Historic Preservation Commission recommended approval of the request, which they formally forwarded to the board yesterday. And the board staff also commented that the elimination of on-street parking that backs up onto Northwest 30th Street 
and replacement with a sidewalk and landscaping will have a favorable effect on the property, on the neighborhood, and that no unfavorable considerations for this work have been identified. Okay. Um, how many parking spaces were eliminated off of the 30th? You know, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, it's coming from over here. You probably can't tell given the masks, but um, how many um, parking spaces were eliminated off of 30th, and then how many are going to be added back on that off-street parking, if you, if you know? There were, well, there, to begin with, there were four spaces in the front. The front was completely paved, and we're taking a lot of that paving out. And the requirement um, per the municipal code for this building are 10 spaces. Okay, so that's what's going in the back. At least 10 spaces are going in the back? Excuse me? At least 10 spaces are going to go in the back, off-street yeah, parking? Yeah, okay. they will all be off-street, okay. yes. That's good. I mean, the area needs more parking, so that's favorable in my estimation. Um, board members, any questions or comments? Okay, I don't have anyone else signed up to speak. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak on this application? Okay, I think we can uh, take a motion. I move we approve. A second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in case 14902 for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for a variance. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item two is case 14916, request of David Box for a variance concerning a front yard and side yard setbacks at 901 North Francis Avenue. Good afternoon, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicants who are also here with us. Uh, this is a request for a, a variance to the setback. When we set out to start this project, uh, my client went through the uh, Urban Design Commission, got approval of the project. As they were set to turn dirt, the survey um, revealed that there was an encroachment of a carport that exists on the property to the north of approximately six feet. So we went through various steps, including filing a lawsuit um, to try to find a way to remove that carport. Uh, ultimately, the length of time that the carport had been there did not allow us to, to legally get rid of the carport, so we were forced to uh, either reimagine the project or seek relief. So last week we went to the Urban Design Commission on two things. One, uh, approval of a CA for the project itself. They had already approved the project, but it was shifting, so it needed to be approved again. They, rec they granted approval of that, and then a recommendation to this Board of Adjustment on the setback variance. They likewise granted approval of recommending approval for the setback variance. So we come to you today with a recommendation for approval from the Urban Design Commission, as well as the approved project. So. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, you will note that there is a letter of support in your uh, packet. To, uh, forgive me if I missed it, but what's the precise amount of the uh, variance that you're requesting? 6.32 feet is the okay. encroachment, and we're shifting it. Is that the exact? Yeah, we're shifting it 6.32 feet to the south. Okay. So it was the exact same again that, you know, we never, we didn't have to come to you the first time around. Uh, the project complied with all of the regs for UDC. It's just that, that 6.32 feet. Instead of redesigning the project and putting something else there, we just literally shifted the whole thing to the south. And it's a side yard. This project actually orients to the east. So it's not a front yard. So that, I think, helped the UDC get there, that it was really a side yard. So there wouldn't be that much of a difference just shifting the whole project south. Do you know what the separation from the non-conforming carport is to where you're wanting to wanting the variance? Is there any? Or I don't it? know. I mean, we will still have, if you look at the site plan before you, 10 feet or five? Yeah. Five feet. Oh, okay. So there's something. So yeah, so it's five feet to the encroachment and then that encroachment is, is a carport and then it's a, you know, a distance and then it's the home. And then just so I can kind of understand the whole context, what was the lawsuit around? Well, we, you know, we tried our best to figure out a way to have them remove the encroachment. We could never get any traction um, with the, the people that lived there. We filed a lawsuit seeking to have it removed. 
as a trespass on our property through the course of discovery, it became clear that the carport had been there for a period that exceeded 15 years. Uh, and in our estimation, we did not believe that we were going to be successful on the claim. It was likely that uh, some form of adverse possession or, or other prescriptive rights existed based upon the carport. So we uh, quick claim deeded that disputed track to the neighbor to the north uh, and dismissed our claims. Okay. Board members, any questions or comments? That makes more sense to me now. Okay. I don't have anyone signed up. Is anyone else um, that's in the audience hoping to speak on this application? Okay. Seeing none, I think we could take a motion. Move approval. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in case 14916 for the reason that it meets statutory conditions for variance. Cast your votes, please. And it's approved. Thank you. Item three is case 14925. It's a request of Chick-fil-A for a variance to the parking regulations at 14040 North Pennsylvania Avenue. Good afternoon. I am Stan DeMille. I'm here representing Chick-fil-A, or on, on behalf of Chick-fil-A. Um, I reside at 509 Havenwood Lane North in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, we're here today just uh, as a request to remove the re required parking on our site by one, a variance to reduce the required parking by one, um, and the redesign of the, the site plan to allow for uh, more on-site drive-through traffic so we can, by eliminating one parking space, we're essentially allowing six or seven more park um, drive-through cars onto the lot. So. Okay. Um, I remember this variance request, the original one from 2019, um, and it was not a substantial request back then. I think one parking space makes sense here. Um, and if there's any deference due to folks that know how to run a drive-through uh, properly, I think it's Chick-fil-A. So one, uh, one parking spot makes sense to me here. Board members, any questions or comments of the applicant? Okay. Is there any, I don't have anyone, anyone signed up. Is anyone else hoping to speak on this application? Okay. I think we could take a motion. Move approval. I'll second. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to move to approve the variance request in case 14925 for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for a variance. Once we're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Item four, case 14926, is an application for special exception of Bruce Norton to allow a mobile home to serve as his temporary second dwelling to relieve a medical hardship located at 11117 Payne Road. Hello, uh, my name is Bruce Norton, 11117 uh, Payne Road. We was looking to get a medical variance to help with our autistic son. My daughter's gonna, we was trying to get my daughter to move in a trailer next to us on the property to help take care of him during the day because he's having a horrible time in school uh, when we ain't made high school yet and I don't know that he's gonna make high school so we're gonna try to get him homeschooled with her because she's got her teaching degree on our property okay um, there was one I don't know if you were able to see the protest letter, but there was one protest letter in here, and I don't know if you wanted to speak to that. Uh, I did, we didn't see it. Okay. Um, there's one that, from a mic, probably Berger or something similar to that. It just says they oppose it and they believe it'd be a better solution to add a room to the existing dwelling, um, which would eliminate the need for a special exception. So we just usually like to give people an opportunity to address any protests, and that's the only one we received. So. Um, do you have any comments on that or just let it stand on its own? Uh, well, I didn't hear all of what you said on it. Um, the, the protest requests or recommends that you just add a room to the existing dwelling instead of adding a mobile home. That's, well, that's, what we have, uh, we have a mobile home and it's very hard to put a add-on room to that because it's this high off the ground. Yeah. So it would be quite a bit of work to do that. It would be easier just to move another mobile home in. Uh, in the field right next to me there on my property. Okay. 
And for these, you generally provide staff with evidence of the medical hardship, so I assume we've received something evidencing the medical hardship. Yeah, we, we got a letter from a physician in the file. Okay. And these can be, I believe, up to a period of three years. I know you mentioned that the child had not yet reached high school. And so, depending on how long you expect this to go on, our powers limit us to three years. So, were you requesting the full three years or some? Yes. Okay. Board members, any questions or comments? Uh, I don't have anyone else signed up to speak. Is there anyone that wanted to speak on this application? Hearing none, um, I think it, it makes sense to me, particularly since we're limited to three years. Um, if something goes horribly wrong, we'll know about it and we can address it upon renewal. Um, but this one makes sense to me. So, any questions, comments, or a motion? <coughs> I'll move to approve uh, case number 14926. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Oh, this, the motion's um, to approve for three years, I assume? Three years, sorry, okay. yes. Um, the, we have a motion and a second to approve the special exception in case 14926 for a period of three years for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for special exception. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Item six, case 14929 is a request of Melrose Lane Investment to the variance for a requirement for a service building and laundry facilities at a manufactured mobile home park, 8021 Melrose Lane. Good afternoon, once again, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive. This is a request similar to uh, a series of requests that you had a month or so ago um, in which we seek uh, relief from the requirement that there be an independent service building within this park that would provide laundry facilities as well as um, bathing facilities. Um, the, at the time the board heard these last cases, they made a requirement within the order that each individual unit have hookups for laundry as well as um, bathing facilities. This client is likewise agreeable to those requirements being placed in a board order. Um, so with that, I'd be happy, happy to answer any questions and would ask for your support. I remember this. This is the Planning Commission, right there. I'm sorry? Planning Commission? I remember this somewhere. This one was here before. Was it here? It was okay. here. Yeah. And there were, there were three of them. Yeah. And I expressed some hesitation um, then and expressed the same hesitation now. Um, this to me is an issue that if this or other clients are going to keep having these issues, they just need to address that with counsel. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to maybe one more, and I'm only one board member, but going forward, I'm not going to be comfortable. Um, granting many more of these because again i think this is more of a city council issue and not really a board of adjustment issue so i, I mean i i'll agree and disagree i mean i agree that it's an issue that council needs to address to a, an ordinance amendment that is a very lengthy process um, but this is exactly why we have a board of adjustment you know to, to seek relief from um, a provision within the code so you know the, the city is undergoing a, a code update presumably Things like this that, that consistently come up in front of boards or planning commissions will be a part of that. Uh, but yes, I think you were perhaps the lone dissenting vote last time, and I'm hoping that's the case again today. Yeah, I, I think I still went on board with it given the conditions that we imposed and that were agreed upon. Um, but yeah, that, so that, those are my comments, uh, board members. I think I can potentially get on with one more, but going forward, I don't think I'll be able to support these. Um, particularly without any assurances that there will be any changes to this in the code update. And so right now it's, a, it's an unknown. And if that process hasn't already started to, to potentially change that, then, then we don't have an indication that these won't keep coming up to us. And so at some point it'll, it'll not get my support, but um, not quite there yet. So board members, any questions or comments? Is anyone, uh, I don't have anyone signed up. Was anyone hoping to speak on this application other than the applicant? Okay. Hearing none, questions, comments, or a motion? I'll move approval 
with the conditions imposed that were discussed and we put in the other. For the prior uh, yeah. grant, okay. Yes. Um, I'll second. And was that laundry hookup laundry for each individual home and bathing facility? So the way that the previous board order read was all units shall have laundry, um, a laundry and bathing, I think it was hookup, laundry hooks up and bathing facilities was the way that the order read. Okay, so a second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the various requests in case 14929 for the reason that it meets statutory conditions for a variance, subject to the same conditions um, that the applicant was, were imposed on the applicant in the last applications. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Item 7, case 14931. It's a request of Johnson and Associates sure. on behalf of the Promenade at Gallardia for a variance to the setback regulations at 5832 Oliver Court. Good afternoon. Mark Zitzow with Johnson and Associates, 1 East Sheridan Avenue, on behalf of the applicant. Um, this is a, a bit of a unique lot. Uh, if you look on the screen, it's off a of cul de sac, but then it also has the main road through the Gallardia neighborhood kind of swinging into the lot, uh, creating a couple strange angles within it. So we're requesting a variance uh, to the building line uh, that was actually intended as a front yard along Gallardia uh, Boulevard. So if we stay here for just a second, if you look to the north, there are three homes on the north side of the entrance. Uh, those homes are actually set back from the back of the curb about 41 to 45 feet. And I think that number is important. And so on ours, we were requesting a requesting 20 feet of relief uh, to the 30 foot setback. Uh, we're amending that based on a conversation with the neighborhood to 15. So we're seeking to encroach with into that setback 15 feet. In doing so, that puts our structure 45 feet from the back of the curb, which is in line with the structures to the north. When Glardy was envisioned, uh, that Glardy Boulevard homes were going to front onto that street through different plats and revisions. This particular section of property uh, was revised. Everything to the south of our property is actually in a piece of Glardy that is zero lot line, so there are no setbacks. Most of those lots are loaded off of an alley and were envisioned to be pulled up closer to the street. So we think there are some unique circumstances going on here and that encroachment of 30 feet uh, was, we thought was a bit excessive and really shrunk the building envelope given that it was a side yard setback and not a front yard. So with that, uh, happy to answer any questions, uh, but we would ask for your approval. So the after changing the request, the total amount of the request is a 15-foot variance, so they'd encroach 15 feet into the setback? That is correct. Okay. Um, I, I, I pump the brake sometimes when we're talking about PUDs, um, but I did look at this one and it originated, it looks like, in 1995 and has had a lot of amendments since then. If it's a relatively recent PUD, I really hit the brakes, but this one seemed to be, have been designed a long time ago and things have changed since then. So um, that makes sense to me. And then one of the things I was gonna ask is if we could reduce this and it looks like you have, so that's favorable as well. So um, board members, any questions or comments? Okay, is there anyone that would like to speak on the application other than the applicant? Seeing none, I think we can take a motion. I'll move approval of case number 14931 for the reasons that it meets the statutory conditions for a variance. And this is for 15 feet? For 15 feet. Okay. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in case 14931 for the reason that it meets statutory conditions for a variance of up to 15 feet. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's proved. Thank you. 
Item 8 is case 14932. It's a request of Celia Gibson for a variance to the side yard setback located at 2029 Northwest 19th Street. Um, I've become an Oklahoma City contractor in the last two years, so I'm kind of new to it. And I took a house and was doing an add on. When I submitted my site plan, it was not approved. Because uh, they... I'll have to stop you there just so okay. I don't get slapped by the municipal counselor. Um, are you uh, Miss Gibson? Yes. Okay. So if, just for the purposes of the record, if you could introduce yourself by name and address and then... I'm um, sorry. That's At fine. 2029 Northwest 19th. Okay. I technically own the house, but I'm a lease to own with okay. the property, so I'm representing basically myself. Okay. Um, we submitted the site plan and they said the, the add-on went beyond the garage, so therefore the garage had to be at least six foot back. Um, I was informed I needed to get a demo. Uh, permit and I got that, demoed it, put it back, and was completely unaware till the garage was completed that I was supposed to have a permit for the garage separately, and I was unaware of that. All we did is take it back and add feet to the back of the garage, so I'm asking for a variance to allow it to stay in its state. Um, I, the, the second site plan I submitted was approved, so I I thought that was took care of my garage. So it was completely built back and it would be a lot of money to have to take it all down and redo it five feet over. And the way the yard sits, the driveway is very narrow to the house. It would be a lot more difficult to move it. So I was asking for a variance. There's also a drainage ditch between the two properties, as you can see. So it's not really a danger to the neighbor, like it's right next to another structure. Um, so I'm just asking if we could get a variance to allow it to stay. So, um I guess a couple of questions, and while we're looking at this picture, where was the original garage in relation to this picture? Um, it was where, you can see where it was in the front of that concrete. It's now had a new driveway put in, but that's where it was, and we've set it back. So we demoed a move back, and are actually using part of the initial pad, and we just uh, uh, moved it back and added some concrete and rebuilt. And then this is a variance request for the side yard setback and not the right. rear yard setback. So right. the existing garage was non-conforming under the current code? Yeah. Okay. And then moving it back doesn't really impact the variance request, but it does put it closer to that other carport, it looks like. It, yeah, it's not encroaching any further than it already was. It's mm -hmm. just in a different location. Okay. Correct. Hmm. It is now the proper setback from the add-on. Um, so since they took it down completely, uh, they lost the non-conforming status. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. you're building back, it's like it's a new. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in some of these cases, it's fine to rebuild it in the non-conforming location, and we don't really have a lot of issues with that. But in some of them, the code was changed or that setback requirement was put in there for a reason. And so if we can get things up to code for safety reasons or whatever reason, then we like to do that. Um, and so that is sort of my cause for hesitation here. But um, board members, questions or comments? So, so what is the variance request? Sorry. It's the side yard setback. So the drainage ditch there, there's supposed to be five feet. And it's how much now? I, I assume it's on the property line there. But it's on the property line, Yeah, correct. so it's the full 100%. The carport is beyond the end of the, car, the garage, or it's very close. They're not, they're not side by side, as you can somewhat tell from this. Mm -hmm. But I've also am doing a firewall in order to pass oops, sorry, the code. Uh, we are putting a firewall on the side of the garage as well. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Looks like you guys share a driveway, right? Is that all one big concrete slab or? Um, technically, it's well at the driveway itself. When you get to the approach, we've uh, we're having to have there's the five foot set off on the on the approach. Right, but it's all one big concrete. Um, slab though, right? Well, yes, but as well as you can see in this picture, it doesn't show it. There's the ditch between them, but the, the driveways are not at the same level all the oh, okay. way down to the I approach. Gotcha. They're not even combined. Okay. I believe that, I don't know if that drainage is owned by the city. I'm, it appears like it's set up for that reason, but at some point they do combine towards the end.
I mean, there are a couple of issues that you, you probably are already aware of and, and know that it's going to be a close call uh, when you filed the application. But, you know, one of the things we like to guard against is people just building things not in conformance and then coming and sort of trying to get forgiveness from the board with the hardship being that they've already spent fifteen, twenty, a hundred thousand dollars, you know. And so so that's one of our concerns is just And and I understand that and I definitely try to follow the rules. I submitted the second site plan with the garage as was and it was approved by the city. So I, yeah. I did it based on that and I and I again I apologize. That was not intentional. I always try to follow all the rules and do everything the right way. And so I guess learned. the chronology that I had in mind was you got the demo permit that didn't mention anything about this because why would it? It's a demo permit. But I guess there's a second permit that was approved for this construction. Correct. JJ, I didn't see. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have anyone signed up to speak. Is anyone else hoping to speak on this application other than the applicant? Okay. I guess we can see where we are. Questions, comments, or a motion? I'm looking at every garage around there, and they all have the exact same thing going on, so yeah. I think I'm okay with it. And this only came up because she lost legal non-conforming taking down the own. Okay. I'll move approval. I'll move approval. Yeah. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in case 14932 for the reason that meets the statutory conditions for variance. Once you're able to, cast your votes. Voice vote, votes in favor for Ms. Ybarra, and it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 9, case 14, 935, request of Craft and Toll for a variance to the lot size requirement in the AA district located at 400 Southwest 104th Street. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Spencer with Craft and Toll, 300 Point Parkway Boulevard. Here on behalf of the applicant, Shield of the Faith Church of the Nazarene. Um, so we're requesting a variance to the zoning relating to the minimum lot size in AA zoning um, for the existing church property at 400 Southwest 104th Street. So the church property is currently 4.83 acres, so it's below the five acre minimum for uh, agricultural. And the church is desiring to sell off the southern portion back behind, uh, you can see that highlighted on the, on the, the screen now. Um, to sell that to the neighbor, um, and then that basically, it's an unutilized portion of their property that they're having to maintain, so they'd like to reduce some of their costs associated with maintenance, mowing, um, those things of it. And so they'll be selling it to the, uh, the property to the east, SPD 780, and there's already an application in to rezone that, that portion that's shown. Um, so in order to convey the property, an administrative lot split's needed, and so we found out that basically since the, the properties don't conform to the agricultural zoning um, based on lot size that we needed to seek a variance for relief on that um, so that they'd be able to sell the property. Um, the remaining church tract would be 3.58 acres. Um, this requested variance will not only provide relief to allow the church to sell the property, um, but will also bring the, the remaining property into conformance. Um, I will say that uh, that it's very consistent with uh, the other properties in the area. There's some uh, adjacent properties that are zoned AA that range in size from, I think, 0 0.7, a little, a little less than three quarters of an acre, um, up to about 4.38 um, acres. So uh, basically, uh, it's not completely uncommon for this area. Staff had found no unfavorable conditions associated with the variance request, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, um, this may be a question for Mr. Privet, but it seems like 
for me at least, we're getting dangerously close to something that you would see at planning. And I mean, if we were just, you know, for financing purposes or whatever purposes, cleaning up the church being under five acres, that seems more board of adjustment to me, but splitting this starts to encroach on planning a little bit, but I might be alone in that sentiment. Like I said uh, earlier, like the, point of the, the portion that's being sold off is already in the process. It'll be rezoned and it'll actually be absorbed into the lot to the east. Um, but to convey it, it has to be split into that small track so it can be uh, the deed basically approved and, and given to the other. And we can do a, a lot split basically to combine it with the lot next to it. So at the end of the day, um, you've got the church property and that SPD 780 next to it. You'll end up with just those, but of differing sizes. Yeah, and that, you know, obviously works in favor of the application. Um, I would just want some kind of assurances that that would happen here, and I'm sure it would get approved, but um, what I'm kind of trying to guard against is it, when we'll have a lot split application and there's already some proposed uses, that's pretty clearly a planning commission issue for us, but here we've got Kind of an, at least as the application read before today, the application read it was just being sold and it was going to be an unknown use for us, um, and that I had some trouble with. The fact you know if it's absorbed into the next property as a new PD or SPD that makes sense to me. But if that all falls apart, then now we have we're back to my concern earlier with this um, property that we've just split and no one knows what's going to happen to it. So. And can we condition it on that, on that use? I, I, I thought about that. I don't know. Um, I haven't thought completely through that. And to see if you could still get approval of everything you needed to get approval of, including selling the I mean, I guess maybe you could sell it with that condition, and then they could take that condition to the Planning Commission, um, potentially. But So th now the zoning of the, the smaller tracks has already been through Planning Commission. It's waiting to go to City Council. As far as the lot split, it's an administrative um, process that's done through staff, and I mean, uh, we've turned that in, and I, I think that it's waiting basically for this to be, um, for a variance to be able to approve that. I guess I might not be understanding exactly the request, um, but it. So, so basically when the church sells this property, the remaining church tract and this piece in the brief moment while it's being conveyed will not meet the the minimum lot size required for AA. And in fact, the church property, the property as is today doesn't meet it either, um, nor do the adjacent properties that are zoned AA next to it. So, Well, and you, uh, you mentioned that the smaller track was, had just gone through planning, so I wonder why this didn't get cleaned up through that proceeding. I mean, I don't, that's, well, I guess that's so my question. The, the potential buyer of the property is is the one that's rezoning the small tract on and so the church in order to sell the property doesn't want to rezone their property from aa um, just wants to be gotcha. able to sell the property and that's where um, we, we find a hardship there um, for the church to be able to sell this piece of property off um, it just so happened that this came up after the, the talks and negotiations between the buyer and the seller had, had started and the zoning process on that piece had, had already gone well on its way. Okay, okay. That makes more sense. Um, board members, questions, comments? Okay. Um, Just came through planning commission. I must not have been there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, you know, call me a pessimist, but I'm, I always wonder, if, you know, if that, for some reason falls apart, what are we left with? Um, and so that would sort of, to me, work in favor of adding that condition that Mr. Brewer was talking about, but I don't know if that blows up. I just haven't thought through everything, whether that blows anything up or causes any hindrances for you. Um, so is, would the condition be uh, basically the approval of the zoning of the small tract? Is that? And that being absorbed into that adjacent property. I mean, that would be the primary one for me. And then I'd get more, much more comfortable with. And I mean, I think we can agree to that. I'm afraid we're going to end up with the, the chicken and egg scenario of being able to 
approve the administrative lot split. As long as they approve that, then we can go file it of record. But I think that, uh, and JJ, correct me if I'm wrong, the staff's going to need the variance in order to approve the lot split because you're going to have. That's right. Lots that. Right. They don't conform. Right. Yeah. That or a zoning change, I guess. Yeah, the zoning change has been through, like I said, been through planning commission, and it was recommended for approval. Okay. It's on its way to council. Okay. Um, sort of out on a limb here, but I think there's enough to get me comfortable with it. So, okay. um, board members, any more questions or comments of the applicant? Mm. Okay. I don't have anyone signed up. Is anyone else hoping to speak on this application? Hearing none, um, questions, comments, or a motion? I'll move approval. One second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the variance request in case 14935 for the reason it meets statutory conditions for a variance. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you all. Thanks. Item 10 is case 14888. It's an application for special exception of Randall Birchall to allow home sharing at 1211 North Ellison Avenue. Greetings. Uh, my name is Randall Birchall. Uh, I reside at 732 Anthony Terrace in Norman. Uh, 1211 North Ellison is a property we purchased uh, a while back, and we're looking to put, make that a home sharing for Airbnb. Um, we, we originally purchased it from an individual who had it set up as an Airbnb, and we wanted to continue that. Um, when we went to uh, apply for this special exemption, we were told that uh, we needed some off-street off parking or on-site parking, because the only thing that he had before was on, uh, was on the street itself. Um, we've got a few quotes to get some, uh, an asphalt or concrete parking or driveway in the backyard through the alleyway. Like I said, we're just wanting to make, like I said, continue this as an Airbnb to set up, uh, to encourage people to come and enjoy the benefits of downtown OKC and 16th Street Plaza. Okay, looks like three bedrooms. Um, how many people total is it advertised uh, to? We've got it set up right now where it can hold, uh, I believe it's 10 people. Is that on some couches or something, or excuse me? Is that on some couches? Or? Uh, we actually have so we have two master, two big bedrooms that have uh, full size beds, and then we have a third bedroom that has two different sets of tw uh, bunk beds. Um, one has a full size bed and a top bunk, and then just two twin beds, and the other one. And then we do have in a den area, we do have a pull out sofa as well. Okay. Um, with that, I would I would definitely personally want to condition it on um, constructing that off street parking, and potentially the board can discuss li limiting the number of people that it's advertised to because that's a lot of folks. Um, and it seems to probably one of the things that works in your favor. It's already been apparently already been an Airbnb and successful, and don't have any protests. Yeah, but like I said the so, I'm sorry. Yeah, the but guy we had it before. I mean out of the 365 days of the previous year that he had it, he had it rented for 330. So, I mean, it was definitely successful and definitely. I, I think my issue would be, um, and I didn't look at the listing, but whether it was previously advertised as 10 people or if it was six or something a little bit more normal. Um, uh, when we bought it, it was, it was advertised as I think 10 to 12. Okay, okay. <clears throat> And the driveway that we're going to be putting in the backyard at the 20 by 20 pad, we're going to do some uh, construction back there to make sure we can get at least two to three cars back there. Okay. Yeah, just this, this area doesn't have a lot of parking, as I'm sure you're aware. Right, so, yeah. Yeah, so we, with that kind of density, that would work in favor of uh, approving the application. I did have a question about it being grandfathered in, but the um, change in ownership, I think, explains that, yeah. that answer. So. Um, Board members, any questions or comments of the applicant? Would you be willing to reduce the number of guests 
Um, we could possibly, uh, like I said, we were counting on at least eight um, to be in there. Um, Personally, I just take pause with some of these that are single family residences. I mean, you wouldn't have 10 people living there in this crowded area, no parking. I mean, cars may not get 10 people. Um, right, well, we were, I guess we were counting on there. You could, there would still be some on street parking as well that would be available. So you'd be able to have two to three cars in the back and then a, a car or two up front if necessary. Yeah, and I think Mr. Barr's point is one that we, that goes into our analysis and one of the points that we look at is, is the proposed use consistent with what would otherwise be used? And to her point, it, it does seem like a stretch that you'd have 10, 12 people living in this house if it weren't used for home sharing. Um, home sharing, I mean, the reason you're here is to get a special exception and special exception being an exception from the normal use of the property, right? right? And so, um, that just goes into the analysis. I don't know how the board feels about um, limiting the advertising of the numbers of people. I, I would sort of be in favor of um, a shorter period of time if we're going to try out 10 or advertising to less people in a longer amount of time. That's sort of where I am, but um, I'm only one board member. So, um, Any other questions or comments of the applicant? I don't have anyone signed up, but does anyone else want to speak on this application? Okay. Board members, questions, comments, or a motion? I would move approval of case number 14888 with the condition that um, the parking, proposed parking, be built and that the number of guests be limited to six guests for a period of two years. And I would personally want to give him a little bit more on the number of guests. Um, just seems like he had a certain um, business plan in mind when purchasing the property. Was probably relying on more guests than than six staying there. So six might hinder the business a bit more than he was probably intending. Not to say that the board can't vote on six. Part of the reason, or one of the things we can do when approving these is the board can put any restrictions that we want on there that we think are reasonable and um, that would protect the neighbors and the city. And so we can limit the number of people that it's advertised to. I would think eight to 10 personally, eight or 10 personally, but um, that's where I am. And I don't know where the other board members are on that issue, but. Yeah, and my concern is um, just not necessarily, I mean, I know you're making an investment. I, my job is not to look out for your investment necessarily, but the the neighborhood, right, and the, the conditions that we have. And so for me, I think cramming 10 people into this little house when parking is so limited, um, I mean, and if I don't get a second, I don't get a second, mm -hmm. but that. Sure. I, I would be okay with eight. I mean, you look at a car, will hold at least four people, more than likely, so two cars could hold eight people. We could limit it to eight for the time being and see how that goes. That would be all right with you. Yeah, and I mean, like, again, I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, all the other applicants that we have coming in, you know, and yeah. these are, I, I'll tell you this, live around there. the <laughs> only thing that works that's sort of saving it for me is that it's operated successfully as home sharing for so long with apparently 10 to 12 people, um, presumably at least eight, and it's rented out, according to the applicant, some 330 times and we don't have any protests. So it, it seems to be somewhat successful if we're assuming 10 to 12 people. Um, I doubt that most of those rentals were 10 to 12 people. Most of them were, were probably a lot less than that, but just having the option to do that in this area, I think makes sense. But again, I, I, would, I would personally support eight-ish, eight or 10 for a shorter period of time. And then if there are issues with that, with the new applicant or the new owner, then we'd find out about that pretty quickly and be able to, to resolve that next year. Um, but that's where I am. Um, do you want to modify the motion at all or stand by the, the six and see if you get a second? Would you be okay with one year for eight people? To see one year for eight goes? people? We could, we could do that. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. I'll amend my motion to approve case 14888 for a period of one year. Um, on the condition that it be advertised for no more than eight guests and that the parking be constructed, the proposed parking. And then I guess it's um, parking, off-street parking built that 
can hold at least two or three vehicles. Did you want to? Is that per, is his proposal? Does it say that in it, here? It's, it talks about plans, but I, I personally want something a bit more concrete in the approval than leaving it open ended like that. So I would, I would support requiring it to be two or three, however, you, whatever you think, but yeah, it, able to accommodate two or three, two or three, whichever you say. And then we'll see how the board feels about that. But Do you know what your parking's gonna be able to accommodate? Uh, like I said, we're doing a 20 by 20 pad, at least, or at least a 200 square foot pad. So um, it should definitely accommodate at least two. If we spread it out to maybe a 20 by, or 25 by 15, we can probably get three in there. Okay. And I'd be all right with two, especially given how um, short the time period is. But yeah, yeah, we've already got a quote for to do it, not, at least an asphalt pad um, for that price. Or so, and they're good to go in about probably three to four weeks. So, okay. um, yes. Yeah, so that would, I guess, the parking requirement would be to construct parking that would accommodate at least two vehicles. Okay. Okay. We've got a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. Yeah. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the special exception in case 14888 for the reason that it meets statutory conditions for a special exception for a period of one year on the condition that the property will not be advertised as accommodating more than eight guests and um, parking be constructed that can accommodate at least two cars. Is there anything, any other conditions I left out, Ms. Shibara? Did we say one year? Yeah. Okay. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Item 11, case 14895 is a special exception of Kelly Jones to allow home sharing at 2225 North Dewey Avenue. Kelly Jones, 600 Northwest 22nd Street, uh, seeking home sharing for my garage apartment. So my husband and I live in the main house and the garage apartment is this address on here, 2225 North Dewey Avenue. And we want to rent it out on Airbnb. Sure. Happy to answer questions. Yep. Uh, I assume there's somewhere to, to park back there as you drive to the garage apartment. Yeah, so do you, that's our car in the picture right there. So um, we have a driveway and we also have all street parking for free on, along the street. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this was heard at HP yesterday and I assume that was recommended for approval. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. And did they have any concerns or did you have any protests at that meeting? No, not that I haven't heard of any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the garage apartment ones to me are much more straightforward. Um, and I think this is pretty clearly what city council intended with um, home sharing. Uh, some of the other ones we get maybe not so much, but this seems to be within the realm of what city council had in mind. So I'm okay with this. Um, I guess board, we need to talk about a period of time. So given that it's HP, maybe three years, something like that. Man. I don't know if I would go 10. <laughs> <clears throat> on three. Okay. Well, go longer to see what the board wants to do. But um, was there anyone else that, I don't have anyone signed up. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak on this application? Okay. Hearing none, uh, board members' questions, comments, or a motion? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve uh, case number one for. 895 for the reasons that it meets the conditions for a special exception of a term of three years. I'll second it. I've got a motion and a second to move the to approve the special exception in case 14895 for the reason that it meets the conditions for a special exception for a period of three years. Once you're able to cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you guys. Thank you. Item 12, case 14899, request for special exception of Kevin Snow to allow home sharing at 3304 Rock Creek Road. Oh my goodness, Mr. Snow not here. All right, out of uh, courtesy to the applicant, we'll move this one to the uh, end of the agenda and move on to the next item. Item 13, case 14907, special exception of Adela, Adele de Leon Valiz to allow home sharing at 529 Northwest 22nd Street. Good evening. My name is Adela de Leon. 
I'm applying for home sharing, well, renewal, at a 529 Northwest 22nd. Do you have any questions? Yeah, this one is a renewal, it looks like. So you've had home sharing in the past? Yes, the renewal. Okay. Um, I guess one issue I had is I looked at the property records and it looks like Big Truck Tacos owns the property. So can you kind of give us some background on that? Yes, Lower, uh, Chris Lower is the, uh, I am the tenter, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> he rented the house for me, yes. Okay, so he rents to you and then you're planning on doing, or continuing to do Airbnbs for some part of the house? Yes, I live there and this is my, my house. So uh, I am planning, I'm con I would like to continue with the uh, Airbnb on the okay. weekends. And then how many rooms is this house? Two. And it's for four guests only. So I guess my kind of hesitation was it's being advertised as um, a two bedroom. Yes, two bathroom, three beds. And in um, HP. Yes, and I was approved yesterday. Sure, but in, in an HP district, um, you have to, while you're renting it out, you have to reside in the property, unless you get a variance from that requirement. Well, uh, I live there, that's my primary house, and sometimes I have a practice, I mean games with my kiddos, and we go out the weekends, but now I, I know I have to be present, and Chris Lauer is, Give me the other property. It's next to it. It's a, it's one lo, uh, it's one property. But he was using the other house, the little house for office. Now he gave it to me. I'm renting the whole property now. Okay, I don't. So are you saying that if you can rent you speak out, louder? I can hear you. Are you saying that if you rent out this property that you're asking for, you'll be staying in the little yes. property, so yes. you'll be on the property? Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? I will be in the property, okay. like I've been doing it. How does how does it work when you're renting from a renter? I think that's fine. Whoever has the possessory interest can get a special exception and um, a permit and do home sharing. I think that's fine. That's between them and the owner, whether the owner's gonna allow that and the owner's insurance company is gonna allow that, but that's for them to worry about. Um, I guess my sort of issue was it's a two bedroom house and she's supposed to be living in it, but she's gonna be renting out both bedrooms. And then we find out today that there's apparently another property there that she can stay at. Um, so that's, I guess I didn't realize that at first, or whether that qualifies as being on the property, or whether she'd need a variance as well. As long as she's on property during the rental, it's fine. And I guess, can you, Tell us a little bit more about that other I can. dwelling. Can you tell us a little bit more about that other dwelling that's on the property? Because that's that's new to me. The little office that you're going to be staying in. He wants to know more about that property. How many rooms does it have? Two rooms. This will be just for me. When the 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 other houses were on rent. It's I don't know what to say. It's a small. And up in concept, one bathroom, two beds, almost the same style, that big one. I, make, I want to make clear I, I live there on, that big, on the big house. We just, uh, big truck tacos don't want to use anymore for one. office, that little house. That, so Chris Lauer gave me the opportunity oh, to have the both. So this is kind of reverse, I guess, of the last one they had. You're Potentially, I just don't. I, I guess I just don't. Yeah. Um, 
personally have a grasp of, of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of stuff that's not in the application that you're telling us today that, ch that potentially changes the application. Um, How can change the application? Because right now I'm leaving on the 529. I live there. That's my primary house. So right now, just Chris Lauer, just the owner of Big Truck Tacos, didn't want to use anymore the, the, the little house for office. So I just bring that in case you have questions or where I will stay when the house is on rent. But if that I little, have, if the little house is at a different address, so what I have pulled up is a map, and that is one property. But but I see the little house that has a whole. I, what I think is the little house, and there's a different address on that that might or might, might or might not be the same property, and that might or might not matter for your home sharing application. Normally, if there's a different address, we, re, we treat those as different for the purposes of home sharing. So for example, if you're getting home sharing at these, different, these two properties, you would need two separate applications. And so it's not clear to me that your going to be residing at the property when you're staying at an office in a different address in the back, if that makes sense at all. So I guess sort of where I am is potentially a continuance to get some more information on the application. Um, and again, it could be in your favor because this isn't defeating your application. You just need to get, potentially need to get a variance in addition to a special exception. But I'm not even clear if you need, I'm not even sure if you need that. And so for me, I just sort of want a little bit more clarity, but I'm only one board member. The other board members might be okay with this. So um, board members, any questions or, or comments? It looks to me from the aerial that's up right now that there are three structures on the subject property. Are they all three houses or is one a garage? Okay. There's a garage between them. I've got it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. But the address is for the two residential structures are different. Yeah, this, the smaller office is 2308, at least according to Google Maps. Um, and I don't know what, what the street is, but the address and the number is 2308. Probably Dewey. Dewey, yeah. And then. The subject here, it's 529 Northwest 22nd. So, well, any other questions or comments? Yeah, I mean, the reason I have a concern about it is because I feel like we have we need to clarify the issue, not necessarily deny your application, but clarify the issue for our purposes because you could potentially have someone who lives next door across the street or and it's a different address even though it's in the same vicinity and in a historic neighborhood right right and we have these type of applications come up but they're not living there right so i think that for us to clarify moving forward we should probably get some clarification on that yeah i'm saying loophole <laughs> all over this yeah it, i just say it's not much different than owning a duplex and home sharing one side. It's just that these are two separate buildings on one uh, physical piece of property. And it's HP also, right? Yeah. Right. And so if they're considered, if she's considered to be staying, I'll, I'll use the language of the ordinance, but. OK. So the property will be the host's primary residence and occupied by the host at the time of the rental. So that to me, in HP only is where we have to worry about this, but in HP, the host is occupying it in the master bedroom and they're renting out on Airbnb a guest bedroom. That's the cleanest interpretation of that for me. Um, in other applications where we've, where we've had a duplex, I think that's a good way to think about it, but my recollection is we require a special exception for each unit of the duplex. And so it's not clear that you'd be occupying unit A that's also home sharing 
if you're actually staying no, no, in Unit B. No, just one, one house will be on rent, not both. I, I understand that. I understand so, that. But what? I so I didn't understand that. But the but the one that is that you are putting on Airbnb is a two bedroom that you normally reside at, right? Mm -hmm. So you normally reside there. It's a two bedroom. But you're putting on Airbnb a, that same two bedroom house and when that's rented out, you're gonna stay at a different residence. It's not clear to us that that qualifies as you occupying the residence at the time of the rental for the purposes of the code. And if you're not technically occupying the, the residence, that's okay, you just also need to get a variance. She doesn't need to occupy the same residence. She has to be on, on the property, property, on the on the physical property. Is the property occupied by the host at the time of rent, rental? So I think the question is, what is the property, right? Is and the it, residence. It says the host primary residence. That to me yeah. means the same house, but maybe it could mean property. I don't know, the the overall property. Um, but the the fact that these are two different addresses is also causing some hesitation for me. <laughs> calling it the same property or, or residence. Yeah, so. So, Mr. It, Chair, there is at the county assessor's website two properties for that address, both improved properties. One is 1,127 square feet and the other is 740 square feet, both built in 1941, both with the address of 529 Northwest 22nd Street. Um, what about the third? Because there's the there's a garage, a covered garage here as well, and I wonder if that's the thousand square foot. Uh, there is a that's, photo. This is very tiny. I'm sorry. <laughs> the 740's got to be the north side. Yeah. There's not enough on that south for it's at least a thousand. Okay. I guess if I'm going to Airbnb a house in HP, I'm going to live in the garage. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to close all that off and go to <laughs> Yeah, and get in that way, yeah. yeah. There are photos on the website, but they're not clear, so. Okay. I can't really tell from this, but it does identify two separate structures. At the same address. At the same address. Well, there, so there are, even on this aerial, you can see, I think that might be referencing the, that garage. Maybe not, but there's two, there's three structures on this aerial. And so I'm thinking maybe on the county assessor, it's, it's counting just those two, the primary residence and then the garage, but not this office. Here's another part, um, looking again at the, the assessor's site. It says building number two, is the building that has 740 square feet. And that bed, that property has two bedrooms and one full bath. Okay. And then when you go to the other one, which I am apparently not able to do, <laughs> but that smaller one is building number two, which implies there's a building number one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, well, I don't know if the board is comfortable voting or, or where we are, but we'll open it back up to questions or comments. And I think, I, I personally would like more certainty. I mean, I think we're sort of almost there and can sort of get behind it, but for some of this stuff, I, I personally would rather have more certainty, particularly given that it's a new ordinance, it's in HP, um, and you may or may not need a variance. And so it might, I guess one of the things we're trying to prevent is in six months if something happens and it's determined that you should have actually also gotten a variance, you have to come back before us in six months. And so I'm trying to get it all done at one time and get all the stuff that you need done at one time. Do you know what the address to the little office building is? Can you speak a little loud? Do you know what the address to yes. the little office building Yes, I do. Um, let me just confirm that just for you. Okay, I've got 
2308 North Dewey. Okay. No, I don't. Sorry, I don't have the number of the house, but it's on Dewey Street, North Dewey. The, the little office. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the my house is facing to the south, so it's on the Twenty Second Street corner with the Dewey. So the other house is the door is facing to the west, where is the Dewey Street. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. So where would she go to get the clarification? I think she would just work on her own and then work with city staff on clarifying um, all this stuff for the board and making sure that it's in the application so that anyone who's interested can see all this in the application because you're telling us all kinds of stuff today that's brand new and is not in the application. And so um, if, whenever all that's in the, the application, I get much more comfortable that the public knows what to expect. And can I don't understand, I'm sorry, my poor English. So what okay. are you meaning about the other little house? Do you want saying I want to publish that too? I don't, I'm doing, I don't get I, it. No, no, I, I think you just. That your application that you submitted doesn't say that no no because wasn't it's new okay it's, so that's what we're saying okay that all of that information needs to be in your application so that whenever your neighbors get a copy of the application they know that you're going to be living in the little house you're not going to be living in the big house they know they have all the information they need and we have the information and we know the addresses of the little house and the okay. big house. So okay, and, and what about if I decide to not stay? Because this is some plan. This is what we're talking about. So if we just say no and just stay in my own house, the 529, if we leave it like that, will be another problem? Because yeah. I live there. Okay, no, 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 we understand, but you're advertising it to people that are gonna rent it. You're telling them there's two rooms. Uh huh. But if you're going to be living there while they're there, where are you going to stay? Okay. So, so what I need to do is, on the application, add the other house and telling everybody that I will be there when my guests arrive. Yes, and tell us the addresses of both places. Just put everything in the application so that we know all of this information. If I provide the address right now, we'll be all good. I'm sorry? <laughs> The, all do you need is the address or correct my application? No, I mean, there's there's more than that. I mean, and that you're going to be living in the, the little house, okay. and right, all of that needs to be here. And then he says you need to work with the staff people to understand the issue about whether you need a variance or not, in addition to the special exception. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I have to come back again. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and then. Um, the, the variance issue, again, I, I am concerned about that because not particularly just for your application, but for other applications. Because we get people that apply for one big property that has 10 different units in it. And right now we require every single one of them to get a special exception for every unit. And if this, if your application counts as one property because it's the same owner, potentially all of those people don't actually need a bunch of different special exceptions and applications. They only need one because it's the same owner. So in the past, that's how we've interpreted it, is if it's a different address, you need a different special exception, different application. And given that interpretation, I think you might not be residing on the primary residence and you might need a variance. You might not, city staff might determine that you don't, but you might, and I would just want some clarity from city staff on that issue before I can support the application. So, um, and again, all of that I think needs to be in the application so that the public knows and they get notice of all of this, and if anyone wants to object, they can object. The reason I say that is because in the historic preservation districts, that's where we get the most objections to home sharing. And so if there's going to be 
some kind of opposition. I don't, it doesn't look like there is going to be, but if there's going to be, I want everyone to have notice so that they can't say they didn't get notice of the application um, or adequate notice of the application. So I think it's looking like a continuance, um, probably a month, I would think. Um, will she have to go back through an HP with a new application and will that take longer? No, they be no I don't think so. They have, they have already approved the current application, but if it's amended, I don't know. City staff can deal with whether you have to go back through right. HP or not. I don't know. Right. But, um, we, can do, we can do two weeks and meet with her in, in that length of time, and then if we have to, have to, yeah. we can always continue it again. Okay. And then if the next meeting's in two weeks, the 21st? Yes. Okay. Um, are you available? Well, I'm sorry to have you come back here, but there are just too many uncertainties. So um, it looks like the 21st is the next opportunity to come back here. Does that work? Are you going to be in town and everything on the 21st? Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, board members, take a motion. Move that we continue case number 14907 to the October 21st meeting. Yep. Is that yep. the right date? Second. Okay. We've got a motion and a second to continue, continue this application in case 14907 to the October 21st meeting. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's continued. That no information I have to provide us with the, the board of adjustment? I would, work, I would work with city staff. They're very helpful and they, they're here. The people you'll be working with are here, so they'll, they'll work with you and, and make sure you have all the stuff you need. Okay. Thank you. Item 14, case 14921, request of Doug Lister to allow home sharing at 1615 North Marion Avenue. I'm Doug Lister. I reside at 2237 Northwest 28th Street, Oklahoma City. I'm here to... Um, for application for home sharing uh, agreement on all on multiple platforms. Okay, it looks like two bedroom, one bath, probably. And then off street parking was available. Yes, it looked like um, many off street parking places. Okay. Board members, any questions or comments on this application? Is, is this being redeveloped? Big one. Is this being redeveloped? Um, I saw no. a site plan here. Okay, so that's just for our just for a visual. Okay. Okay. Is anyone? I don't have anyone signed up to speak. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak on this application? Okay, board members, questions, comments, or a motion? Yes, we need to <clears throat> figure out length of time. Mm -hmm. Just thinking. What guests are you advertising for? Uh, we, we'd like to have um, possibly six guests here. We have double garages and um, parking in the driveway for up to four cars. Um, just given the area, it's kind of a kind of a hot area, so I, I would think around three years. As a district. Is there a motion? I thought I heard someone say something. Is there any way we could do longer than three years? Oh, okay. Um, board members. I'll move approval three years. Okay. Including all the imposed conditions in okay. the application. Okay. Give me a motion in a second to approve the special exception in case 14921 for a period of three years uh, for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for variance. Um, and the conditions include the self imposed conditions in the application. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 
Item 15, this case 14928, special exception of Tiffany Stalker to allow home sharing at 3008 Northwest 45th Street. I'm Tiffany Stalker, 3008 Northwest 45th Street, and I bought this little house two months ago, and I would love to air, Airbnb, so that's why I'm here. Okay. Just tell us a little bit about the how you're going to advertise it. So, like the numbers of room, number of rooms, and number okay. of guests. It would exclusively be on Airbnb's website, and I'm thinking it would be four people, up to four people, at the property. And there's room for three cars in that carport, and then two behind it. Uh, there's off-street parking as well. I, I do know that when I got all the information for you guys about the owners in the surrounding area that there are a lot of rentals in this area um, and some Airbnbs so that's just a little background on it. Mm -hmm. okay, board members any questions or comments? Okay. Is anyone um, else open to speak on this application? Okay, board members, questions, comments, or a motion? I'm thinking three years. Sounds about right, or it does to me. Yeah. So I'll move approval for three years and include in the advertising the conditions that you put in your application. What conditions? Just a minute. Put it up. Uh, four guests. Okay. Um, then I, it says it can accommodate three cars. I would just want that to be a condition. Just say, you know, uh, advertise it as saying off street parking only. Yeah. Advertising is? As saying off street parking only. Oh. So just advertise it as saying, if you're going to rent this, you need to park in the driveway and not on the street. Um, okay. Yeah. They can park in the street if they want to. Um, I mean, it'll be it'll be advertised as by it'll advertise driveway. by you okay. as park in the driveway. Um, there's public some, street, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a public street, street but street. usually the thought is it deters people from parking in the street if you tell okay. them to park in the driveway. Okay. So, um, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. We have a motion and a second to prove the special exception in case one four nine two eight for the reason it meets the conditions for a special exception for a period of three years um, and the, the property will be advertised um, up to four guests and off street parking only once you're able to cast your votes and it's approved thank you thank you Item 16, case 14930, special exception of Monica Jacks to allow home sharing at 1629 Northwest 13th Street. Hi, my name is Monica Jacks. I live at 518 Northwest 14th Street. And I'm asking for a special exception to uh, 1629 Northwest 13th Street to be able to use that as a home sharing property. Um, I, this home is coming off of a fresh remodel that someone else did, so it's completely new inside um, it's got three bedrooms set up as queen queen two twin beds normal sofa no sleeper sofa it's 965 square feet not big enough for more than six guests and that is why i intend to advertise it as it's got a two night minimum on it um, we are about three blocks south of plaza district and that is a fun area and i think it's a fun area i don't want the fun in my house i just want people to come and stay because we are <laughs> really nice and close to the fairgrounds, we're close to Midtown, we're close to down, we're close to everything. Um, but I do want a certain type of person staying there just because it is my home and I do have an interest in it. Um, yeah, I've got parking um, for one large vehicle in the driveway, um, two spots in the, on, on the street in front of the house. Um, to my east, those three lots are all owned by the same person and they're all vacant. Um, there are homes there, but nobody lives there. I've met all my neighbors. They, nobody seems to have a problem with it. I've chatted with them all. Um, so, yeah, so I'm hoping that you all agree. All right. Board members, any questions or comments? 
Is there anyone else that wanted to speak on this application? Okay, seeing none, uh, board members, questions, comments, or a motion? I kind of think of it as a similar to the last one. But. Yeah. Yeah. I'll move approval of case number 14930 for a period of three years with the condition that the owner advertise it as uh, no more than six guests. And um, I guess you're saying you only have parking for one. I have, well, if they're two small cars, they'll fit at the driveway. There's actually, um, on the one side of the house, there's a gate that can be opened. It's very narrow. It would be difficult to get a vehicle down there. I suppose somebody could. Right now, that's where my garbage cans are, are, are sitting. I, I would be loath to allow someone to really pull a vehicle back there because the chances of them hitting the house or their cars, I think, pretty high. But yes, there's definitely space for one large SUV in the driveway and two actually large vehicles on the street in front of the house. And, and, and I will say that our neighbors all park on the street. It is yeah. not uncommon. There's a lot of street parking in that area. Um, the streets are a little wider. Some of the streets are wide, yes. Especially McKinley's wide. But, um, and I also, given the walkability of the area, I don't know if I'd want to cram two cars in that driveway and block off that sidewalk. And so maybe we don't worry about a parking condition on this one. That's my motion. Okay. We have a second. Okay. Got a motion and a second to approve the special exception in case 14930 for a period of three years for the reason it meets statutory conditions for a special exception um, on the condition that um, the property would be advertised as no, sleeping no more than six guests. Once you're able to, cast your votes. And it's approved. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Item 17 is case 14933. It's a special exception of Ginger Allen for home sharing at 2038 Northwest 18th Street. Um, Ginger Allen, I'm at 10432 Black Oaks Drive in Oklahoma City. Um, we have um, approval of the homeowner. We would be the tenants for this property. We would not be living in the property, but we would like to home share it, and we have their permission to do that. Um, it is a larger three-bedroom, two-bath property where uh, there is two off-street parking um, spots off of Penn plus a two-car garage, and um, there is off-street parking, but I wouldn't recommend smoking, <laughs> parking on the street. So we're just looking for a special exception to be able to advertise this on home sharing sites. Yeah, not a lot of parking on, on Penn. <laughs> um, I don't think I had any questions on this one, but board members, any questions or comments? Right. Oh, were they going to be, the guests going to be allowed to use the garage? Yes. Okay. And then just given that it's on and would it be an issue to, I assume not because they're your rules, but um, condition this on the self-imposed rules in your application? So we've got um, like no parties, quiet hours, things like that. Right. Okay. Yeah, and we have um, strict penalties for um, disobeying the rules as far as like throwing parties, things like that. I saw that, which is good to see. So um, good deterrent. Um, board members, well. I don't see anyone else here, but is there anyone else that was hoping to speak on this application? None might be on the last. Okay. There's a gentleman back there that you're sitting with, and he, oh, if he husband. wants to object, <laughs> that would be the time. <laughs> um, board members, questions, comments, or a motion? I'm okay with this, so I'll move approval for three years. Advertise the self-imposed conditions. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the special exception in case 14933 for the reason that it meets the statutory conditions for a special exception for a period of three years and incorporating the special uh, conditions, the self-imposed conditions in the application. Cast your votes, please. And it's approved. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, I think that takes us back to Mr. Snow. 12. Okay. 
Well, have we been in contact with him? Because he was content, it was continued twice to add some content to the application, and I think probably city staff did that for him and added some content. And so now, maybe he thinks he doesn't need to be here to present the application, I don't know, but, um, okay. Well, I think out of a courtesy, we can continue it to the next meeting since we don't see him. Um, board members, any issue with that? Okay. So that would be October 21. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to continue case 14899 to October 21, 2021. Cast your votes, please. And that item's continued. Mr. Chair, I don't have a note for item number five. That one was continued. Okay, thank um, you. I think just prior to the meeting, so it's not on the agenda as continued, but just prior to the meeting. So, um, so that should conclude all the items on items requiring a separate vote, which takes us to additional items. Seeing none, communications and board reports. I don't have anything on the agenda. Citizens to be heard. I saw Michael Washington earlier. I saw that. I was, yeah. I was wondering if what kind of protest we would have there, but <laughs> um, other business from any board members or staff. I really appreciate the maps with the red dots. Yep. That's a big help. Yep. Thank and you. I guess it's the new thing, renting out a house and then Airbnb in it? Yeah. Yeah. Or, okay. I mean, it, yeah. So <laughs> I guess you rent it for 1200 and Airbnb and hope you make more than 1200 If I rent a house, I'm not letting them do that. Well, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, do it myself yeah. and we get the money. Or hire a company or something to yeah, do it for you. But, okay. uh, but no, the maps are very helpful. I think one thing is, which we can probably say off the record, but the only thing I might want to add is I saw the very helpful focused view of areas that have a high density for the proposed applications now on the right side of that map. If we could include in there existing home sharing, because that one seemed to go property by property, and then we could really see um, if one street is getting really saturated or one block or something like that. That's, that's the only addition I would have. But that focused view is very helpful in the hot areas where there are a lot of home sharing. I think that'll really come in handy. So is, that's. Is that a GIS layer on the side or is that? Could it be added? Don't know. Is that a GIS layer on the, on the site when you go to the map and you can turn on off certain things? Like zoning and is she doing that? Okay. I don't think it's That'd on the good. public site though. Yeah. Yeah. I well, don't think. Yeah, the public GIS site. Will it be on there? No. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say if we had that, then we could really drill it. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, anything else from board members or staff? Anything else? Okay. Uh, we are adjourned.